Good day, students. My name is Natalie Adams, and I'm going to be your TFS 701 lecturer for the semester and possibly for semester two as well. So what I need to do now is to actually share my screen with you. So can you please give me a minute? I'm trying to do something different uh, this with my PowerPoint slides, but so yeah, just bear with me and share. Then I'm going to be able to open my slides. Open. And then open. And so, yeah, you're going to see my face at the bottom. <laughs> so I will be trying to record it this way. So again, um, TFS 701, welcome. Um, and welcome to the to the to this year, March 2024. Welcome to 2024. And one of the things that I've always said is that we are going to make English fun in this classroom. The idea is that we want to make sure that you are going to be a, a teacher that, and your learners are going to feel that the classroom practice is going to be fun. Okay. So there we go. So this is a bit of my information, the TFS 701 first additional language lecture information. So Natalie Adams, you can find me under this email address, natalieA at stadio.ac.za. So apologies about that part there, but I'm battling with slide share and doing this virtual recording. So yes, I still need to figure that one out, but anyway, we'll continue. So now you know my name, my email address, natalieA at stadio.ac.za. And yes, in this picture here, we see four students and they're having a lot of fun. Hopefully that is what you will experience this semester. And so, and I think our motto is that we, I love teaching English. I, I adore it. I, I believe that it's such an important language for our learners. So um, I am with you this next semester. I'm excited about the entire process. So let's begin. So what you need to know, what do you need to know for this module? Okay, you need to know that um, you can get to the next slide. You need to know one thing that, that's quite important, and that is how to send emails, okay? So, because obviously you see me, I'm here virtually in the classroom, and this is the only way you're going to be able to communicate with me is via email. So, you see the picture on the side where the lecturer is standing with emails coming her way? I don't want to have that experience. I have it, I've had it in the past. So now what I'm doing is to make sure that you understand what you need to do when you send me emails. So what I would appreciate is that if you need to indicate to me, for example, that you are a TEFS 701 student, that must be in the subject line, the, your subject line, the headings, for example, must be TEFS 701 SS1 submission, or it can be TEFS 701 uh, online query because maybe you can't access Canvas. So these are the different things that we can uh, that you can do to make your life easier and my life easier as well. Okay, so that's number one. Make sure that in the subject line you indicate to me that you are a TEFS 701 student and that and your query. Also, another thing that might sound a bit silly, but it needs to be mentioned, I need to know what your registered name. So what is your, your name you registered for, uh, your actual name and surname? People, we've I've had students that would send me an email and they sign off with some name that I can't find. Uh, it might sound silly to you, but it's quite a headache for me for example, so I would appreciate if you can just follow and uh, give me your correct, the name that you registered with, as well as your surname. Now, if you're going to send me the email, remember I told you what needs to be in the subject line, be specific, you know, with your topics in, in headings and also, and in the text, you know, tell me that, for example, um, um, dear ma'am or Marcel or Natalie, I don't care what you call me, but what I would like you to say to me is, for example, I am struggling to access Canvas or I'm struggling to access certain information. Please give me the information. Tell me exactly what you are, what the problem is, and then I will be able to assist you with that. Is that clear? 
So refer to specific issue topics in heading and text with dates, for example. And here's an example on top there where Liana Klaassen sent Dr. Heron an email. So we just took that whole picture so that we can see it. And then she said, good morning, Dr. Marcel. You can say to me, good morning, Natalie. That's fine with me. I am sending this email as I want to clarify if my assignment three was marked. On Canvas, there's no mark. I've attached a screenshot for you. You can see there's a screenshot, a JPEG image there. And then she ends up with kind regards, Lee, Yana. Now, I'm very happy with an email like that because it means I can go into Canvas. I can check whether assignment three has actually been marked and I can give her feedback. So I please, if you can follow that, I will really be happy. Okay. So... Also, one thing that I would love you to also remember is to use your Stadio email address. I didn't look at that one. Your Stadio. I know it's very convenient to send an email from your work email address or from your own because you don't want to go into Stadio's email addresses. But please, people, it's important that you actually send me an email via your Stadio email address. There's also on Canvas, there's, there's an inbox. Um, that you can also send me an email from. So that's also optional. So take that into consideration as well. Now, I think I'm done with that one here. The next one, so meet your lecturer. I just wrote what I actually have written in my, you know, when you open Canvas and you'll see meet your lecturer, that's who, where you'll find me. And so I thought I'll just read it to you. And, I, and this is what I believe. I truly believe that um try and get me try and get this thing a little bit smaller for now <laughs> it's lovely to play play around with technology so this is me i believe that language shapes our lives from birth and our mastery of the deter help determines our, fu our future career paths one way teachers can allow their learners to master the language is to explore and improve their classroom practices, especially in the language of learning and teaching. So here we're talking about classroom practices because remember, it's the practice that's going to make them better learners, okay? So before joining Stadio University, I taught English to high school, for, oh, sorry, home language, as well as first additional language learners at various schools, high schools in Kabecha, formerly known as Porti. Elizabeth. Okay, so when I mentioned high, yeah, I was very young when I started out, 22 years old, I still can remember it. And I was thrown into a grade 12 English first language class. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is a lot. But uh, today I do not reg uh, regret being thrown into the deep end. It definitely helped me in my career. So besides being an English teacher that I started out with, I also lectured on a variety of language modules of Nelson Mandela Universities. These include professional English and um, professional English. And that I would normally have, uh, I think I had a group of law students that I taught English of, uh, to law students initially. Then I went on to teach academic English and those would mostly be for postgraduate students, then academic literacy, so this would be would have been for students who could not necessarily get directly into the university. So they had to do what they call a foundational program. And then I will teach them different academic literacy skills, as well as English communication skills to a lot of students. OK, and and these would be students from different faculties. So I've done quite a bit. I also taught short learning programs to employees at different companies, and that gave me much needed industry experience. I remember I would go for two or three days to um, a company like General Motors, and they I would teach the managers, for example, a report writing skills, or I would have a module on minute writing also two days and teach secretaries or administrators uh, those skills and I really enjoyed it because I can could then see what is happening in industry and that gave me the experience to be able to teach my students even better and now for the last few years I was appointed as a school-based learning learning assessor so 
uh, so far, I have visited 18 schools and it has been helpful to see how our students apply the knowledge they have learned. I believe that my diverse educational teaching background had equipped me to now return to what I enjoy the most, which is lecturing teachers again. And this would be you that I'm teaching. So I'm excited. So how are you feeling? I mean, this is a new semester for you. For some of you, it's the first time that you've studied, back to studying for a while. So I can imagine all the emotions that you are experiencing. So let me know. I mean, there's there's a what they call a menti link on Canvas. So you're going to go to Canvas. You're going to see the menti link. And you're going to tell me how you are feeling. Clearly from my um, uh, recording, you can see I'm kind of excited. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, but yes, I've been doing this now for a little while. And so... I'm quite comfortable in this space, but I can imagine some of you might be feeling quite anxious, maybe a bit scared. Some of you are excited, yes, to be here, worried. Uh, so let us know, you know, so please note. So you're going to go onto Canvas. You're going to go onto Quick, Link, Quick Links 1. I'm going to show you a little bit later how to do that. And then you're going to tell me, then you just have to complete what they call a Menti link. And they, that, that's where you have to just tell me how you are feeling. This closes on the 25th of March, 2024. So you have still a bit of time to access all of this. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So the prescribed textbook that is needed is this. The prescribed textbook is the Thunderbolt um, C and Evan. So this is the book here. The book you see is my face. <laughs> And so they learn to teach. So that's your prescribed textbook, English language teaching in a multilingual context. So here's the entire book on the top side um, on your left. It's the entire textbook. So it's called Thunderwald C. and Evans 2019. And the name of the book is Learn to Teach. That's the fifth edition. You'll find it at Van Skyke's Publishers. So please get this book because you're going to need it for first semester as well as for second semester. Now your recommended reading, so these are additional readings that you need to get first, will be uh, the book, obviously your CAPS document. I mean, that goes without saying that your CAPS document is important. And so, yes, um, CAPS document is needed. There we go. Just trying to get myself a little bit bigger that side. And the CAPS document. So, yes, the Department of Basic Education CAPS document. Here you have it on this side, the picture of it. Please take note that you need to get the CAPS document for senior phase grade 8, 9, and 9, first additional language, English first additional language. Please do not forget that. Okay. So then, um, Another book, this is the book we used to use in the past, but we've now changed to Van der Waalt and Evans. Again, Van der Waalt and Evans would be your prescribed reading. So the Ferreira book here, 2009, that will be your addition, sorry, recommended reading, and that's called Teaching Language. And then finally, so here's the cover of the book. Can you see there, the side, top, top, top left? <laughs> uh, you'll see there, uh, teaching um, uh, teaching language and then finally the Killen we have Killen here as well and this is the book here that you see Roy Killen it's also on the list so you have four books one is a prescribed reading Van der Waalt and Evans and the other three would be recommended readings I think the CAPS document I, I mean that's something that you just have to have Okay, so what are we doing this semester? This is, I suppose, this is what you want to do. No. So in the semester, and I'm going to explain it to you so that you can understand exactly what to expect. This semester, for the semester one, there's going to be three units. Okay, so there's unit one to three. So what are we doing in unit one? For example, this is what we are going to be busy with. Unit one will be about language teaching principles. So Clearly, you can see how that fits in with you becoming a teacher one day. Then the second thing we are going to look at is language acquisition theories for first additional languages. I think it's important to understand 
how a learner acquires a language. And, and because if you know that, then you will know how to teach it. So yes, language acquisition theories are very important. And then the final one would be teaching methodologies. And we're also going to look at interrogating CAPS. So the CAPS document that's been given to you by the Department of, I, or will be given to you by the Department of, of um, Education, we're going to interrogate that and look at that. So that will be your unit one. Now, I think I need to explain to you uh, what we will cover in unit one will normally be part of your assignment one. Okay, so just remember the correlation there. Okay, so now I'm going to look at unit two and unit two will be about interrogating CLT. So CLT, very important thing, name that you need to, to remember. Uh, it's about interrogating CLT, that's communicative language teaching. Remember that word? And text-based approaches. So what do we know? Text-based, I mean, I can already mention a few text-based things here. It's articles, it's composition, sorry, it's articles, it's advertisements. I mean, anything that has a text, you can use how to use that in the classroom. So we're going to look at commu communicative language teaching. And then we're also going to look at text-based approaches. And, we, the, and then finally, we're going to look at speaking. And, and listening. How do we look at speaking and listening in the classroom? And then finally, we're also going to look at a lesson plan design. Okay, so very interesting stuff already. Now look at, I mean, uh, a lot of our students, we have something about not listening here. So yeah, that's where we're going to try and teach you how to get your learners to listen. And then blah, 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 also how to get them to speak. The final unit is going to be based on teaching reading in the first additional classroom as well as the home language classroom. So it's going to cover both of these. But yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite extensive because we're going to focus on many, many things. So yes, just bear with us so far. Okay, we get to the next slide. So distance learning, I mean, distance learning, what does that mean? Um, uh, it's for, This means that PGCE will be delivered using a DL approach. So DL means distance learning approach. Is that all clear? So you know that. So what's that, I suppose, you will ask. What is DL approach or distance learning approach? Let me go to the next slide. But this is basically an online style of learning, which is not face-to-face. -face. So it's not face-to-face, -face, okay? You can see the slide here on top. There's a group of students sitting together, so that's face-to-face. -face. But in our case, it's not going to be face-to-face, -face, okay? You are going to see me via the online method, and I'll speak to you about that later on again. It is going to be independent. So you are going to basically work on your own, okay? It's going to be online and engaged. And how are we engaging you? We will engage you. You will rely on a study guide. Now, I just need to put a disclaimer in here that there is only a study guide for FET students. Nothing for uh, SP students as yet. But yeah, so just remember that. So what are you going to rely on? You are going to rely on Canvas. I mean, Canvas is your the place where you are going to find everything. You're going to rely on this online session that I'm doing with you today. So every week there will be an online session that will come out and I will uh, be able, you will be able to access that link. You are going to also rely on announcements. So on Canvas, there's a section called announcements and sometimes I will announce something. And then you will also rely on email. Sometimes we have to communicate with each other via email. So unlike the person sitting here on top, you know, the group of members sitting here on top, you know, six people, you it almost probably will not be the way you would do it because this is more face-to-face -face interaction. You most probably be sitting like this man with the earphones on and his laptop open and he's got you know, his book, listening to my recording, I suppose, and then a cup of coffee next to him. 
So yes, that's what, what it most probably will look like. Let me get to the next slide. So let's do this. What does this mean for the TEFS courses? Your courses will have three delivery methods. So the first one will be your recordings, like I've said now online links, okay? The next one is also going to be what they call it Zoom or Teams. It's a face-to-face -face class. So this normally happens three times um, a semester. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just giving you a guideline. Normally what happens when we have online sessions, I normally try to do the online sessions just to give you an idea of what you should be expecting in your assignment one, two, and three. So that's normally the case. I'm still working through that. So I'll give you more clarity maybe during week one or two. But so the first one is your online recordings. The second one will be your Zoom Teams, and that's a face-to-face -face session. Remember when I'm gonna speak there, you can then raise your hand via Zoom or you can ask me a question, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last one is what they call online tasks. And these tasks are, are um, almost created to assist you in uh, uh, completing your assignments, okay? So here's a task, it's already on the system, but I just want you to know the basics, okay? So the recorded lectures, what about these recorded lectures, okay? Why do we have recorded lectures? It's to talk about the course content, like I'm teaching you now, this is what I most probably will be doing if I had a face-to-face -face class. So this is to teach you about the course content. We may, This may include, sometimes there might be a videos, there might be additional readings that I would like you to do. And then also I would like you to do online activities. Who should be doing it? You, you, who, you do it independently. You you are an independent being. You do not have to come to a, you do not have to be at a specific lecture at a specific time. Where will you be able to see these online links, et cetera, et cetera? On Canvas, you'll find that, but you can do these things if you, anywhere, whether it's at Starbucks, I mean, you can have a moment where you can't sleep at night and two o'clock in the morning, you wake up and you decide, oh, I'm going to have, I'm going to listen to the online recordings. And then, yes, that's what, so where you can do it anywhere, when, that's where any time, day or night, you can do it any time, day or night. So here we have, if you're going to go, for example, to quick links one, so, so when you go to unit one, Week one, you'll see there the principles of language teaching and learning. Can you see that's written in green? Okay. And then you will see there, welcome to the teaching English. But of course, it will be TEFS 701. And you will find all this information there. Okay. So we'll do a quick glance on our Canvas page so that you know what is expected for you. Do I have to listen to the recorded lessons on Canvas? I mean... There's a bit of a shocking face. Wow. Oh. Yes, of course. I mean, goodness me, how are you going to do your work if you do not listen to the assignments? You need to listen to the, sorry, you need to listen to the online recordings. It's extremely important. Okay. So you need to the lecture, you need the lecture information and the content. And I will be able to give you the lecture information and content. You need to use using what you uh, uh, use in your online Canvas online activities. You need to look at that. You need to complete your assignments. So in order for you to do the work, you need to listen to me, to the content, okay? And if you don't do it, you will not be able to complete the tasks or online activities effectively, okay? So these are just the online recordings. We just take, took an example of it, but that's the idea. Okay, let's go further. So also remember I said to you there's a few ways that we can do by contact with each other. The first one is your online recordings. The second one I mentioned was the Zoom Teams face-to-face -face classes. Remember I said there's possibly for the semester there might be three or more. I just need to get clarity on that, but I'll come back to you. So what we are saying is that there are no more formal lectures. Okay, you will access course information and content from your recordings. This is what I'm doing now, the recording and your Zoom teams and then your Zoom team sessions. 
and then and we call that face-to-face -face class because you can actually see me and ask questions. So you and the, and and the reason why uh, we we're doing it this way, why we have online recordings, why we have a Zoom session now and then, is because we want to practice. We want you to practice. We want you to apply, and we want you to extend your knowledge. Is that clear? As teachers in the classroom. Okay, so this is what you're most probably going to see. There's Dr. M Dr. Heron in the little corner here. Uh, um, I've just decided that I'm going to try out doing it virtually where I'm in front of the slides and you do not see me in a little box. So yes, it's something new, but I'm actually enjoying doing this. So your online task and um, so online tasks will include multiple choice questions. So MCQ is multiple choice questions and activities. So what? There's going to be regular online tasks and activities on Canvas that you have to follow. So why do we do this? We want to extend the recordings and the Zoom team face-to-face -face classes. So we know you know by now that there's going to be recordings. You know by now that there's going to be a Zoom or Teams face-to-face -face class that we might have now and then. But the online task is an extension of both of those things. And this is like, it helps, it supports you before assessments. Is that clear? So you need to complete online tasks as course revision, okay? And where, where do we, well, you find the online activities. You will find the online activities on Canvas, you can get it anywhere, you just need internet access. So please people, when can you access it? Anytime. As I've said, if you feel, if you have internet access at one o'clock in the morning and you feel you want to do it, you want to go to Starbucks or you want to go and just sit somewhere, please, you need to have internet access. Remember, this is a distance learning module. Distance learning means online, so you're going to need internet access, okay? So let me go further. So how will DR, the distance learning help me? It's more flexible. You do not have to go to any lectures. So you can, you can uh, do your tasks or listen to the online recordings whenever you feel like it, okay? So more flexible when you learn, day or night, anytime, how you learn, how you learn, do classes all at once, or break lessons up. I mean, you. I am not someone that's very good with listening to an hour long recording. So I normally would listen 30 minutes maybe and another 30 or sometimes 15, 15, 15, because it can become quite intense. But if you are someone that can listen to an entire recording at once, good for you, you can do whatever you want to remember. You are doing all of this independently. Now there's less class hours, so because obviously you're not attending classes. So the, the Zoom Teams face-to-face -face class, the recorded lessons and the online activities, those are all needed for you to get, to actually submit, be able to do your SS1 assignment. You choose where and when you want to listen to these things, okay? It, this will make you, uh, if you do all of this that I've mentioned, th it will make you a better graduate for the workplace because now you've also learned to work independently. You are an active learner and you have to be responsible. Okay. So the next slide will be, so are d d distance learning courses easier? I, I don't know. We, do some of us disagree about this. I Some people say, say no. I think sometimes it's better because you can do it. Uh, you, you have the ability to work and you can also do it at your own time. So that's my point. But yes, no, but they are different. So yes, definitely uh, they are different. You need to same course learning outcomes and assessments. So whether you are doing distance learning or if I taught you in a classroom, you would have still been, you will still be teaching, you will be taught the same course content. Okay, so for the success on a distance learning course, you need to be, and I think this is the next slide, responsible. 
You have to be responsible. You need to complete the online activities. You need to participate in the Zoom Teams meetings when we have one, the face-to-face -face classes like they are called. You need to be actively looking for support online by contacting the lecturer if you're confused about something. You need to check Canvas pages all the time. Some of you do not look at your Canvas pages and you also need to look at key dates. And please people within this module, there cannot be any excuses. Um, as much as you are under pressure because possibly you have a full-time job, we as lecturers are also under pressure and you need to be very aware of when you need to submit your assignments or do your online tracking de devices. You need to look every week, look at the online recordings, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you are working independently, so which means that you must manage your time. You need to check your emails and notifications from your lecturer regularly. And you, or you will not see them in the classroom. So you must check your emails regularly as you will not see us in the classroom. So this, yeah, you have to manage, there's a clock. So you have to manage your time management skills. There it shows. And yes, just the statistics of students in the past who said that sometimes when they access their, um, when they go onto Canvas is when it's any time convenient to them. So most of them said that. So if you feel like you want to go onto Canvas every night, that you can do. If you want to do it maybe every second night. But please be aware, do not fall behind on uh, with your work. This, is, this, this module uh, is not that easy because everything that you're going to do here is about application. You're going to have to apply what you've learned in the content. So it's quite a lot of work. So please do not take it for granted. Try and deal with time management more effectively. Now, one of the things, here's just a work, weekly schedule that you can use for yourself. Maybe week one, you're gonna do, you're gonna listen to the recording this time and so forth. But the thing I want you to focus on is your SS1. So now I think you might have noticed that SS1, you have SS1, SS2, and SS3. These are called assignments, okay? So SS1 is basically assignment one, assignment two, and assignment three, okay? So these weights are 30% for assignment one, 35% for assignment two, and another 35% for assignment three. So when you look at the weights, weightings of these assignments, there's only three for the semester, but it is quite high. And so you do not have the luxury to say, well, ma'am, I do not, Natalie, I don't have, I couldn't submit assignment one because, no, you can't do that. If you do not submit an assignment, the possibility of failure is very high. So I would encourage you to actually look at the weights of the assignments, okay? And so for assignment one, which is also called SS1, it will be 30%. Assignment two will be called SS2, that's 35%. And assignment three, that will be called SS3, that will also count 35%. And that will give you the, the mark of, out of um, that will give you 100%. So now I'm going to show you quickly when your assignments will be after be submitted. So these are the dates that we have. So for SS1, remember, I said to you, SS1 will be based on unit one. I mentioned it earlier. So that will, what we will find there is a communicative language teaching case study and a reflection. Okay. So now remember you have week one, week two, week three, week four. Currently we are in week one. Okay, so when it comes to week four, that will be then, so the submission of your first assignment, the CLT, the Communicative Language Teaching Case Study and Reflection, that will be, sub you, the submission date will normally be the 11th of April, um, 2024. Now, the, re the reason why you see 9 and 11 April is that we um, have decided as lecturers to rather separate the two dates. So for uh, home language students, they will most probably submit it on the 9th. And my students, the first additional language students, will submit theirs on the 11th of April. It just makes life a lot easier for us too. So remember that your SS1 will be 30%, okay? 
your SS2, which is your unit two. Okay, so unit two, we said unit two, it's going to be about lesson plan design. It's going to be about speaking or listening tasks. And it's also going to touch a little bit on using the communicative language teaching approach. And there you will have to do a video recording, an introduction. So yeah, we'll talk about that later, but please, you're going to be like me sitting here and recording yourself for this assignment. Yes, it's going to be interesting to see your faces. And that will be actually be week eight. So the first assignment will be week four. The next assignment will be week eight. And that will be on the 5th of May, 2024. Remember, I said to you that the 3rd of May will most probably be for home language. And for first additional language, it will be at 35th of May. And you can see that it counts 35%, which is a high percentage. Students, you can't afford to mess this up. Now we're going to look at SS3, which, which will be your unit three. And then this will be a genre-based workshop presentation. This will be done in week 11. So this will be the 24th of May, 2024. On the 22nd, it will be for the home language students. And the 24th, it will be for the first additional language students. And that will then be 35%. And then that gives you a final mark of a 100%. Okay? So, have you been listening? You must be able to access code, quiz, link on Canvas to find out. So, you're going to go to your quiz on Canvas. Remember, I mentioned it earlier and I said you have until the 25th of March to complete the fun quiz. And I think that's the one about how you are feeling. <laughs> and you must just give us an answer there. And then, yes, this is my final message to you. Um, my fine introduction and welcome message. I can only say to you, best wishes for semester one. Uh, may, may you have lots of fun this semester. And I'm, I'm really honored to be teaching you. And thank you for listening to this presentation. Take care.